Hi, welcome to the cat and dog birthday box. Today we're going to be drawing this picture. And before we get started, let's make sure that you have everything that you need. So to begin, you're going to need a white piece of paper. You're going to need a pencil and you're going to need your crayons. You're also going to need your paintbrush, some paints, and a cup of water to help keep your brush clean in between colors, and a little paper towel. When we complete the project, we will use these um, little stickies to put onto the back of your frame. All right, so to begin, I'll be drawing mine upside down so that it looks the right way for you while you're watching. So at the bottom of your page, right along here, we're going to do our fence line. So you are going to just draw a line all the way across and it will look like that. This is going to be the fence, so we need to make some slats. And so I'm just going to draw a line to the bottom and I'm gonna have wide boards on my fence. It's up to you how wide you want this to be. And don't worry if part of the fence is off the page. I like to call that falling off the page and it kind of gets your brain to imagine what would be there. And so that's really neat too. Now we're going to put a little, some nail holes in, make it look a little more realistic. And I'm just doing little circles, two at the top of each, put one here too, of each board. And I'll just go all the way across. until it looks like this. Then you can add a few little nick marks and that's just your wood lines. I'm doing about three per board and you can see how it's just a little flick of the pencil and then you have your fence. Now on your fence, we're going to draw this cat and this dog. We're going to start with the cat's head because the cat is kind of leaning into the dog, um, kind of getting a little cuddle there. And so in order to do that, we need to draw an oval, but it needs to be on a slant. So if this is the middle of my page, I'm going to draw in this section. So I'm going to start with an oval like this. And that will be the cat with its head tilted. I'm going to put ears on each side. And you can kind of see how the head looks like it's snuggled in already. Now, once I have my, let me get a little closer. Once I have my head, I can then come down and sort of starting from about here, just curve my line down to the fence and I actually want to be a little straighter so I'm going to erase this. I don't like a lot of erasing because I think that in general sometimes we're just too hard on ourselves and so most of the time you don't need to erase it will turn out just fine if you just wait till the end product but I could tell that my my neck was going to look kind of weird if I was that far over. 
So just take your pencil and come all the way down to the fence on both sides. Now for the feet, I like to just do kind of like a circle, two little circles to show paws. And I'm gonna put two little paw marks in there. I'm going to put the tail of the cat on this side because if I put it on the other side, it's going to be on top of the dog and I kind of want to keep the dog on its own. Now, when I'm doing the dog's head, what I do is I, I'm going to judge. So if I look at this picture, I can see that his head just sort of starts off of the ear so that it gives it the illusion like the kitty is on his shoulder. So if I look at mine, I'm going to come right from this corner. There's a, where the ear comes down and meets the head. That's where I'm going to start my dog head, which is a circle. I'm gonna come up and all the way around. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the cat, which is I'm going to come from the head and I'm going to come so that part of his body touches the cat's face. So I'm going to come right here and bring my body of my dog down like that. So then you can see that the head touches his shoulder. Now his paws aren't going to be circles. They're going to be little curved lines that j don't join at the top. But I am going to give him two claw marks. The tail will come from this side and it's shorter. It comes up and back down towards the body. Now for his ears, what I'm going to do is on this side, I'm just going to come down and in towards his head. And on this side, I'm going to come up, or sorry, out, straight out like this. And I'm just going to kind of curve it slightly and bring it back in. Now in my class, in my kindergarten class, when we draw animals with tails, we like to do these action marks. These two animals are friends. So when they get to sit together and visit, they're happy. So I like to just do a few little action marks, a little lines around their tails to show that the tail is wagging. Now let's get to their faces. On the cat, I'm just going to do, on this one I just did a circle, but on this one, I'm gonna give you another option, which is a little heart. Sometimes when you look at an animal's nose, it looks like a heart, it's like a triangle, but it'll give the illusion of a little heart. And I'm going to make the mouth on this one a little bit longer. Just to show you how that little change, this one's short and this one's long, it just changes the look of the animal, it gives it a bit different personality. So you can decide which one you like best. I'm also going to do the eyes, which are a curved line up. And they kind of kick out with a few eyelashes. You don't want to do it too small because when you go to outline this, it'll just be harder to get into those eyelashes, which you know what is okay, but it depends on what look you're going for. So there's my kitty. I'm also going to um, put some whiskers on, 
but I want to do the dog's face first so that my whiskers are placed so that they're not on his face. So if I go over to the dog, I'm going to go just below the middle and I'm going to do a long, flat oval nose. And I'm going to take his jowls, the, the sides of his face, and I'm going to come down now when I did that what I did is I came down all the way to his head then I let that line run along his head wherever I had drawn that back up and to the top of his nose and it gives me a guide to follow so I'm going to do that on the same on the other side and don't worry if it's not completely even. So then his face starts to take shape. I'm gonna draw a little tongue in there. I'm just gonna do a curved line right here. When we color, we can color that red and then have his skin color still under there. Whatever tone his is we'll color that in there now for his eyes he's got these nice big round eyes but there's a space between them so I'm going to start it kind of over to the side with a circle in the middle and I'm going to do the same thing here leaving a space in the middle a circle with a space and every time I've drawn this, I've never got my eyes completely the same. So please don't let that deter you. It's okay if they're a little bit different. And I'll do some little lines here just to give him some character. He's going to get some whisker dots and the kitty we're going to make the whiskers come off of her cheeks and do the same here and then I'm going to give her some little whisker marks which is cute, it makes it look like a um, some little freckles for her. Now, on this one, I just did the background blue. Um, you might wanna add in, I'm gonna show you how you can do some detail here where when you paint over top of it, it kind of is a cool detail. So I'm going to draw, I'm actually going to draw moon in this one, which I didn't have in the first one. You could draw sun if you want, but I kind of wanted to do a moon. And then I'm going to do these little swirls for stars. And there's an artist named Van Gogh who's very famous for his night scenes night stars and starry night and this really reminds me of him i'm still i'm not going to do a black background i'm still going to do the blue but i'm going to show you how to color these yellow so that that all comes together so now the very first thing that i always do when i'm done drawing a picture is I get a black, whether it's marker or crayon or pastel. Today we're using crayon. And I outline my picture. I just trace over top of my pencil mark. And one thing that you need to remember is that when you're tracing, sometimes you're going to stray off the line. But don't worry, don't you can't erase the crayon. 
So wherever the crown goes, that's your new line. Don't try to fix it because it's your, um, because you can't erase it, that's going to become the line that stays. And your pencil is really just a guide. So even if you go off of it a bit, it's still gonna look good. Now, the only thing that I'm probably not going to outline in black are the stars because I think with the crayon alone on those, I'm just gonna kind of color over it. And I'm gonna make sure that I get all of the pencil mark, even these um, little circles on his jowls and in his eyes. A lot of times people think they're finished and you're like, oh, what about his eyes? Oh, did you remember his whisker marks? So make sure when you're outlining your picture that, oops, oh, my crayon broke, I hope yours doesn't. That's one thing actually though, is with pastel and crayon and didn't really follow my own advice, but um, you wanna hold close to the bottom because we have a tendency to press hard when we're outlining. And then with things like pastels and crayons, then they tend to break. Okay, so I'm just going over my fence. I'm gonna make sure that I outline the little nail holes because when I color over top of that, it's just gonna add that extra little piece of detail. And I'm almost finished outlining. I'm gonna also make sure that I get my moon and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the yellow for my stars. So hopefully I didn't forget anything. I'm going to take out my yellow and I'm just going to do this circular motion around and inside each star. Now, I created this video for birthday boxes so that you can do them with your friends at your birthday parties, but some of you might also have a calendar kit and maybe you've chosen this video to complete a calendar page, which is also really fun. And now when I color in my moon, I'm gonna show you how I like to kind of get my crayon and my black and my yellow to blend. So when you run the crayon into the black, it kind of smears into the yellow. Now crayon, it does it a little bit. Pastel, it'll really do it. And some of you with the calendar kit have pastels in your kit. All right, so now I'm going to color my fence. And I'm coloring right over top of that black and letting it sort of smudge. I've got a brown fence. Um, that's one thing is that you don't have to do the colors that I choose. I just, um, when I think of a fence, I guess I just think of a brown fence, but fences really could be any color because they can be painted. And so I'm just gonna go across, make sure I have all my spots colored. You could even, if you wanted to, you could paint this if you find painting more enjoyable than coloring or there's a color of paint 
but you don't have the color of crayon and you want to be able to use that color, there really are no rules. This is just a guide to get you started. And then it's up to you to you to decide what you want to do. Make it your own, right? You're one of a kind. Okay, so my fence is all colored. Then I thought it would be fun because I already have this one colored like this. I'm going to re uh, reverse their coloring. So I'm going to make the dog black and white and I'm going to make the cat orange. Um, so that you can see that you can really use any color combination that you want. Now, when I was a kid, I actually had, a, I think it was my first cat. Um, I had an orange cat and we called it Tiger. And I remember letting it out to go pee and it never came home. So whenever I color an orange cat, I think of that cat. Now there is a way that you can make little stripes on your cat and you just kind of start on the side and then come up to a point, kind of like a little Garfield cat, if you like that. And I'll just show you what that looks like. It really looks like a little tiger. And then I'm just going to come down top of the head and I'm going to do it on the sides by the whiskers. That's pretty cute. And when I look at this, I think, okay, I want to do a little bit of red in there for the nose. Now for my dog, I'm going to make his nose black and I'm gonna do like a circle around his eyes so it's like he's got oh this black I think it's this black is just kind of weak I'm gonna go all the way around his eye and give him like a little patch and then I'm gonna color his ears in black and because I did this, I do not want to do a black sky because his ears will be totally lost in that and so will his tail. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do his tongue red and his paws. He's going to have little black socks. And I think I'm gonna leave them like that for now. Sometimes you'll notice when you start doing other things that you get an idea and you think, oh, I wanna change. And the only other thing I might do actually though is color this part yellow. So he's got a bit of tone on his face. And you can tell when I go over top of the black crayon, it smudges, it gives it kind of a dirty look, but that's okay. That makes it look more like a painting. I really like that look. And you can always go around your eye more if you want. If you want like a bigger patch, just depends what look you're going for. And then I'll show you this again because some of you might want the black and white cat and the orange and yellow dog, or maybe you're gonna do pink and purple, blue and green. That's totally up to you. And if there were colors that aren't in your crayons, but they're, but they're in your paints, then you could choose to use those as well. I'm pretty happy with this. What I'm gonna do now is get my paintbrush and with watercolors, and your watercolor set looks a little bit different than mine, um, but with watercolors, what you wanna do is you want to, let me get my water in there. Um, you want to make sure that you get your brush nice and wet. Don't really, like I 
I'm tapping mine, but I don't want to spread my bristles out so that they fray. So my brush has got quite a bit of water on it. I'm going to work it around in the blue and just get that really wet. And then once I like the texture of my paint, I'm going to start painting. And you can see how the crayon resists. I'm still going to be careful of going around. I'm not going to go like this because um, even though the crayon resists it, like especially with these whiskers, that's really fun. I always love how that looks when you do it. Um, I just don't want any blue on my cat. That's just for me. Okay, so I'm going to paint all the way around. I'll show you. Now with my stars, you can see you don't have to be super careful. I mean, if there's white behind, it's going to... But another thing you can do, like if you wanted that the yellow to pop more, and you just take your paper towel and lift the blue paint off of there. Add a bit more water. If your brush starts to get scratchy on the page, that means you need more water. And if you want it lighter, you need more water. Darker, you're gonna need to, um, you still want quite a bit of water on there, but you're gonna see how it goes. If I was to add more water to that, it would really lighten up. So less water is darker, more water is lighter but it's a fine balance because you don't want it to be scratchy. And a lot of times you can move what you have on your page around and it's a little bit easier to work with. But see, as I go down here, how it's getting kind of scratchy, that's when I know I need to add more water and paint. And the paper that you're working on, if you have a calendar kit, you have a couple different types of paper in there. And you want the thick paper. It's the watercolor paper. It holds the moisture really well so that it's not gonna break through your page. Whereas the drawing paper is quite thin and it's better for crayons and markers and pastels, but it's not good for adding wet. Okay, so I'm just gonna come around here and you can see how that yellow and blue, oh, that looks so good together. And then this little part in here, I almost missed that, but that is the sky behind them. So I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and kind of dab in there. And I got a little bit on my cat's white fur, which is fine. It's a painting and really, we're not going for perfection, are we? We're going for our own personal best. Now this is really wet in here, so I'm gonna give it a couple little dabs. I like to have um, this paper towel or a cloth works really well, especially if you do a lot of art, you can have your art cloths and those help because water, I didn't need to change my colors on this, but then you can wipe your brush off in between. So there's the finished product. I think that's super cute. Now, I'm going to show you how to um, attach to your wood frame. For those of you with calendars, you're going to glue this onto one of your calendar pages. 
Um, I could show that really quick too. Um, your calendar page will be like this and you will glue it to the top part and then your calendar is down here. But for the birthday people, I'm gonna move this out of the way and take this plastic piece off and be careful because one stayed on here and there's three on here. You need four total. They're just sort of a sticky little glob and you're gonna put that in each corner of your frame. And even if you're a calendar person and you don't have frames, when you're done with your calendar, these are canvas frames that I took the canvas off of. And there's a cute little frame under it. And then what you're going to do, mine's still a little wet, but I need to show you. Wait till yours is dry. I'm going to place this onto my picture and I can give it a little. And then you have your finished product. You can set this up in your room and just a really cute little piece to have. So happy birthday, have a wonderful day. And to all my calendar crew, please um, show me what month you use this for. Okay, bye.